But listen to the word. Feed your, your soul. Feed your soul. Feed your soul. Listen to it. Do, you know, just, just during the week, listen. Just pop it up. Listen. It's free. But here's the title of the message. Now, I want the title and the subtitle on the heading, if we can type it all in there. Developing the Correct Self-Image in God, Part 2. Developing a, a, the Correct Self-Image in God, Part 2. But here's the subtitle that I want up there. Slash, he got it. He got it. And I'm going to explain all that to you in a minute. And right now, it don't make sense to you, but, but it's going to make sense in a minute. Everybody say, he got it. I know that's not good English. I know that he, he, no, he got it. What I heard the Holy Spirit say, I'm going to say it just like that. Everybody say, I got it. Now you understand what I mean. If he got it, I got it. You with me? If he got it, I got it. I want to highlight from last week where we were with Joshua. Go, go, to, go to Deuteronomy chapter 31 again, and then I'm going to read. I got, I got a lot of, we got to do some reading this morning. So I need y'all need y'all to stay with me. As I'm sharing this. And I want you to grab a hold of this. Remember from last week we talked about Joshua taking over for for Moses and the fact that before Moses passed, Moses told him, I'm 120 years old, I'm not going to live much longer, and I need you, Moses, God saying to Moses, speak to the people, and then speak to Joshua, your minister, your servant, the guy who's going to come after you. Make sure he understands his instructions clearly, and communicate it to the people. So let's read verse 6 and 7. Deuteronomy chapter 31. And it says, Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. So I want you to get that. And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him, In the sight of all, the, of, all of Israel, same thing. Be strong and of good courage. Thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord thy God swore unto thy fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. Everybody say, God has an inheritance for me. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee, he will, he will be with thee, he will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. Joshua, understand, you must do this. God's got you. He's going to be with you. He's not going to fail you. Understand this one thing. God has never failed you. But we failed him many times. We've done things that God told us not to do. We've been slow in our obedience. We've been, you know, uh, just not doing the things that we were supposed to do because every time we do what God says, his part is already done. But he wanted Joshua to understand, Joshua, son, you're okay, you're good. Everything that you need, I've already taken care of, and you must go do this. This is your next assignment. Now go to Joshua chapter 1. I got to lay this foundation again. Okay, starting at verse 1, 
It says, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, and all this people in the, in this, I'm sorry, unto this land, which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river Euphrates, to the land of the Hittites, unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. Listen to this, verse 5. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. Here it is again. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Verse 6. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Verse 9, have I not commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Now, I read all of that because I wanted to establish the fact again, God told him over in Deuteronomy, Joshua, you're the man. Take over. Be strong and of good courage. Did you know, like I said this last week, uh, Joshua was afraid. He had a fear problem. He had an issue with fear because God kept, anytime God's repeating something, he knows what you're dealing with. Even in our own personal life, God has told you some stuff and he said it to you more than once. Because you know, he knew it was a struggle within you. He knew it was some things you were dealing with, so God kept saying it in your spirit. Be strong and of good courage. He kept saying, you're going to come out. I got your situation. I got you covered. God has had to say it to us repeatedly because we, he knows we kind of vacillate. Nah, God, I believe you, but... No, God said, uh-uh-uh. Be strong and of good courage. Joshua, you can do this. Now, that's you. Your name might not be Joshua, Joshua, but what God said, you can do it. God says you're strong of good courage. You can make it. You, this is going to turn around. You just got to keep trusting. You got to keep standing because God says, I, there, mm, there's an appointed time for your blessings. There's an appointed time, but God said, you just got to stay focused. You got to stay steadfast. You got to keep believing me no matter what you feel, no matter what your circumstances say. God says, be strong and of good courage. So he kept telling him, he kept saying, Joshua, you can do it, man. I got you. I'm not going to fail you. I'm right here with you. One of the things I shared with the, uh, uh, the ministers and the MITs yesterday in, in the class that we had, I, I, I don't have time to go in it, but, but we were reading over in John chapter 14. Jesus uh, uh, told the disciples that he says, I'm going to be with you. Then he said that the Holy Spirit is going to be in you. Yo, come on, we got a double whammy. God is with you on the outside, but he's also in you. He's with and in. So that means, guess what? He's with and in, so I got to win. Oh, somebody ought to get that. He's with and in, so I'm going to win. You can't lose if he's with you and he's in you. You just got to keep trusting. You just got to keep believing. You just got to say, God, you know what? No matter what's going on, I'm going to stand on your word. That's what he was saying to Joshua. Just keep my commandments. Keep being obedient. Keep doing what you know to do that's right. When things look funny, he said, don't turn to the right or the left. Just keep doing what you know to do is right. Yes. You feel like quitting. You feel like throwing in the towel. You, keep, you feel like saying, God, I just don't know what's going on. God said, I know you don't, but I do. So just don't turn to the right or to the left. He just said, stay with me and you'll be all right. Amen. And you know, sometimes you need to shake yourself. 
Sometimes you need to shake yourself and say, self, look, we're going to do this this way. We're going to do what God said, and we're going to talk. you got to talk to yourself. Come on. The Bible says David encouraged himself in the Lord. When you feel like you're going to talk crazy, shut that nonsense up and say, no, 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 we're going to do what God said. I'm not turning to the right or the left. I'm going to keep doing what God said. So he told him, be strong and of good courage. Stay right here. You know what? I, I just heard that. I heard that in the spirit. I, I got I to gotta speak to this. Because it's a spirit that prevails in the church a lot of times. Notice when I said that some of y'all can't sing, I felt, I felt the spirit of offense. We got to stop getting so offended in the church. Y'all, come on, y'all. They beat Jesus up. The Bible said he was beaten beyond recognition. His own mama couldn't even hardly recognize him. He was beaten so bad. And none of us have gone through anything like that, but we get offended so easy. We just sit around, and then, then we get puffed up. See, I felt it right then when I said that. I was, <laughs> we get puffed up. We get, you know, <laughs> like my daddy would say, you get all swole. You get big swole. You know. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Who's on the inside of you? Who's with you and who's in you? He's bigger than anything you're going to face. But stop getting offended all the time. Every little thing. We just boom. Now, turn with me to Joshua chapter 10, because this is where we're going to go to work real quick. Now, the Lord gave me this word. He took me over here. Because this is something that we really need to get in our spirits. We really, in our souls, I should say, we need to grab a hold of this because of the simple fact. God spoke to Joshua, and he said, be strong in the Lord. Oh, no, he didn't say be strong. He said, be strong and be of good courage. And we're going to quote another scripture. Be strong and be of good courage. Be very courageous. He said, Joshua, be courageous, be strong. So if he was telling him be strong, that means obviously Joshua was, was acting weak. He was in fear. If somebody is, is okay, can I, can I say it the way I want to say it? If somebody telling you to tighten up, that means you're not tight. If I, if I, you know, you all remember back in the day we used to say that? Somebody say, tighten up. That means you're not acting right. That means put it together. Come on, get it together. So God was saying to Joshua, Joshua, tighten up, man. Get it. Come on, stop acting like. Greater is he that's in you than, than he that's in the world. God said, you, you, got, you got me on the inside. Why, why are you? I mean, Joshua didn't have it. We do. But, you know, he was saying, because Jesus hadn't come yet. But what I'm saying to us, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Why are we acting like, do you know, as I said in the scripture earlier, we saying no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. So why do we act like, you know, one little thing and we, Phew. stop. Everybody say, tighten up. Come on. Quit it. You bigger than that. Sometimes when our kids get to, you know, they get a little wimpy and weakish and, you know, I look at my daughter and you might say, oh, she's a girl. Yeah, but she need to be a strong woman. Her grandmother was strong. I don't need you to sit around and be, you know, and there's a time and a place for everything. It's a time to cry. It's a time to mourn. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, we know that. But then there's a time to be strong. And sometimes we, we forget the hope on the inside of us, that we have the hope of glory on the inside of us, and we sit around too much crying and whipping, and you know, this little... Stop it. Stop the drama. Get it together. You're bigger than that. I don't do good when people are looking for sympathy. Hear me. I don't do
don't do good with that. I don't, I don't do good, you know, because I got my own, you got your struggle, I got, you know, you know, you got your story, I got my story. But guess what? Only story that matters is his story. You got victory. Dust yourself off, lick your wounds, and pick, pick your head up. Stop walking around so sad. Pick your head. Oh, lift up your head, O ye gates. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and let the king of glory come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord God strong and mighty. The Lord God mighty in battle. That's who you got on your side. So lift up your head, doggone it, and, and look like you who you represent. You represent Christ. You don't represent no weak God. You represent a strong God. came out of my spirit because I, I'm tired of seeing the body of Christ just, and don't get me wrong, we all got trouble, but guess what? God has given you victory over your trouble. How many times have God brought you through things and you come out before? So now, why do you think in this situation God going to fail you? And he told Joshua, I'm not going to fail you. I'm going to He didn't say that. He said, I'm not going to fail you. I'm right here with you, boy. You're going to be successful. If you let me let or help you be successful. If we don't cooperate with God, God said, well, I ain't got nothing to work with. Because if you sit in a corner crying and wimping and stuff like that, you know, God said, well. I shared this with, with uh, Elder Lou. We were talking. I remember my, my, uh, my little cousin that my mom raised when... Um, she became like my little sister growing up. And I remember when we first, Danielle, first got, we was at, we was at uh, the Veronica's church when my mom took her and, and claimed her. My, my mom had a, a spirit of just claiming. She would just claim babies and people. Just It was all, out, all kind of people in our house. She would, she just, you just, come on, you just living with me. She just come get you. My, my, great, not my, my grandfather's sister, Aunt Sadie, that I never didn't, I didn't talk to you guys about, she was living in Trenton, New Jersey. Mama just drove up there and said, come on, I'll say to pack your bags. Come on, you're going back with me. That's the kind of person she was. So she just grabbed you. She just, you didn't have, if you didn't look right, you didn't have nowhere to go. Mama said, come on, you're coming home with me. That's just the way she was. So just, we just never know who was going to show up. Just, you know. If you got to sleep on the floor, you sleep on the floor. We give up your bed, you give up your bed. Because your mama just might bring anybody home. You never know. Because she had a heart for people. She had a heart for, for helping people. And I remember she, she grabbed, she had Danielle. And, um, and Danielle had come to the environment she came from. She, she was used to having temper tantrums. And she was a little, little teeny thing. I mean, she wasn't big as a loaf of bread almost. I think she was maybe, maybe 18 months or something like that, maybe close to two, but she was just petite and small. And I never forget going from the living room to the dining room toward the kitchen, it was like a little corridor. And Danielle decided that she wanted to have a temper tantrum. And she got in the floor, and she laid down in the floor in that little corridor, and she just went, ah, 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 ah. She just kept going like, ah, ah. I'm making a point. Ah, 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 ah. You know what my mama did? Mama did like this. She walked right over. She said, leave her there. When she get it out of her system and realize that I'm not going to pay her any attention, she'll stop crying. So she sat there, and you know what? We kept having conversations, and she would just, and she would get loud, and we would just get louder talking. She get loud, and we get even louder. To the point where we totally ignore. See, a lot of times when you, when, mm, when the devil is at work, if you ignore him, he'll leave you alone. Because all he's trying to do is make a fuss so that you'll say something. He's trying to do something. He's trying to attack your body. But if you know by your stripes he, you're healed and you ignore it, the devil said, oh, man, I thought they were sick. No, we're not sick. We're healed. I just don't acknowledge what you're trying to put on my body. So I'm good. And guess what? Danielle finally got up and came in. There and I, I, and I, if I remember correctly, she came and walked over to my mom and put her head on her lap. And my mom's like, you finished now? I'm not going to give any place to you. I'm not going to cater to your, 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 your foolishness. 
We need to grow up in God. And stop all of this getting offended all the time. Come on, y'all. We got destiny. We got too much work to do. Now, let me go back. I told y'all Joshua 10, right? Here we go. Now, let me say this about Joshua because I, I got a long way to go and I got to get there real, real quick. And I'm going to try to get through all of this as fast as I can. Um, now, Joshua now had had victory. So Joshua, remember Moses died. He took the people into, across the Jordan into the promised land, toward the promised land. And his first battle was the battle of Jericho. Okay? So he got enough courage to fight the battle of Jericho. Now, he didn't have to do much. They just walked around the, the, the walls, walls of the city one time for seven days and then seven times on the last day. Then the walls, the Bible says, and, 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 and I've said this to y'all before, the walls didn't come tumbling down. See, many of y'all looking at it because y'all question. You're going like, you go back and read it. The, wall, the Bible says the walls fell down flat. They didn't tumble. Because it was a, a walled city and if, it had, if they had tumbled down the rubbish, they would have to crawl all over. But if the wall fell over flat, they could walk right through it and go into the city. Read the Bible. They didn't come tumbling down. They fell down flat. But that was his first uh, victory. So, so he's getting stronger because he had one victory. Then you go back and you look, and he fought uh, AI, another victory. Got, got another victory under his belt. So, so, so Joshua, now, now how many of y'all know when God told Joshua to be strong and of good courage, the strength and the courage has to build. So you got to be patient with yourself. When God is telling you to be strong and of good courage, you got to understand that's not going to happen right away. God's going to have to somehow and sometimes test your faith and develop your strength and your courage. Just go through the process so you can get strong and become a good courage. Don't sit back and keep crying and whining and just let God work on Let patience have its perfect work in you that you may be perfect and entire, lacking or wanting nothing. So God said, Joshua had these victories. Son, you're doing all right. You're getting better. Everybody say, I'm getting better. God is working on us. God is saying we need to be strong and of good courage. God is saying that you can, you can do this. But you're going to have to work with the process that God has you in and pick your head up and stop worrying and whining about everything and begin to be the strong woman and man of God that he's made you to be. God's got you, just like he had Joshua. So now starting in chapter 10, verse 1, it says, And now it came to pass, when Adon is the, the, next, the, 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 the king of Jerusalem, don't y'all laugh at me because y'all know what it is? Okay. Adon is that, that, that. How about the king of Jerusalem? That work? I'm in Bible college, but I, they ain't teaching me Hebrew and Greek. So, you know, as my brother-in-law would say, it is what it is. He knew who he was, and you do too. heard how Jerusalem had taken Ai, didn't I say that? And had utterly destroyed it. And he had done to Jericho, didn't I say that? And her king, so he had done to Ai and her king and how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made uh, peace with Israel and were among them. That there were, they were feared, I'm sorry, that they feared greatly because Gibeon was a great city in one of the royal cities, and because it had greater, it was greater than Ai, and all the men thereof were mighty. Now let me let me talk to Gibeon real quick. Gibeon was a city. What they did, if you go back and read the text, Gibeon was a city that tricked the nation of Israel. Because as they was going through the, the land and, and defeating everybody, Gibeon decided, look, these boys got victory, they're strong, they're mighty. So let's act like we came from a far city to be, you know, make allegiance with them, and it really was the next city over, so that they won't kill us. So they decided, guess what? We will become, you know, your allies because we come from a far place and we want to serve you. Well, basically, it was a lie. They didn't know 
Joshua and the, and the princess did not know that Gibeon was their neighbors until a little bit later. They found out that these boys lied, but they had already made a vow to them that they weren't going to defeat them. And see, back then, your word was bond. The Bible says it's best not to make a vow if you're not going to keep it. So they kept a vow, and once they found out that Gibeon had tricked them and they had lied to them, Joshua said, well, all right, but guess what? Guess what you're going to do? You're going to be the, you're going to cut down the trees of the forest. You're going to do some menial jobs because you lied to me, and that's going to save your life. But now when the other kings found out that, that Joshua had made a league with Gibeon, these kings said, well, guess what? Let's go take Gibeon city. Let's go get them. Let's, let's fight. Let's, let's, let's take them. I, because, you know, they're stronger than AI, so let's, let's go take them. All right? So now, look at what it says. Verse 2. And they feared greatly because Gibeon was a great city as one of the royal cities and because it was greater than Ai and all the men there were, were mighty. Wherefore, that king again of Jerusalem sent unto Hamam, uh, Hoham, homeboy, Hebrew, Hebron, and, you know, those dudes, much unto the king of, mm -hmm, and the king of Dubur, uh-huh, Egeon, saying, Come unto me and help me, help that we may smite Gibeon, for it has made peace with Joshua and with all the children of Israel. Therefore, the five, this is what I want you to get. Therefore, the five kings of the Amorites, the kings of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jermosh, the king of Lashash, and the king of Egon, gathered themselves together and went up, they and all their hosts, and encamped before Gibeon, and made war against it. So now Gibeon is in a situation because they got five nations coming against them. Now, how many of you all have been in situations where you got four or five things going on in your life at the same time? You got four or five things coming against you at the same time. Sometimes it hits you so hard that you feel like you can't even take your breath. Catch your breath. You're like, so you take, a, you take one little, boom, something else come. Boom, something else come. Boom, something else come. But that's where he was. He found himself at a place where he had five nations coming against him at the same time. So Gibeon, look at what Gibeon, look at what he does. And it says, and Gibeon sent unto Joshua to the camp of Gilgal, saying, slack not thy hand from thy servant, Come up to us quickly and save us and help us for all the kings of the Amorites that dwell in the mountains are gathered together against us. But now because Joshua gave him his word, Joshua said, look at what Joshua said. Joshua ascended from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him and all the mighty men of valor. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Look at this. Look at this. this. This is what I want you to grab, because I got this in my notes, but I got to go through the text. It says, fear them not, for I have delivered them into thine hands. There shall not any man of them stand before thee. Now, isn't that what we read over in Deuteronomy 31? God said, nobody's going to be able to stand against thee. Nobody's going to be able to overtake thee, he says, because I'm not going to fail you, and I'm right there with you. And this is for somebody in here today. God wants you to know the stuff that you're going through, they're not going to overtake you. They're not going to get the victory over your life. God says you already have the victory because I'm right here with you. God says somebody needs to hear that today. You need to be encouraged to know that God is right there with you. But you're going to have to go through the process of the battle to see God's hand move. You're going to have to go, you got, you're going to have to go through it. And we're going to read through, I'm, I'm going to read through this text because this is going to be strength to somebody today. You're going to have to go through some, you know, guess what, y'all? And the one thing, that's why I said, if God has already told Joshua that, that I've given you victory over them, guess what? You already got victory. Now, the victory hasn't manifested yet, but you already got it. Now, you got to see this about your own life situation. The victory hasn't manifested yet, but you already got it. You already have victory. 
Because the Lord has given you his word. And guess what? Just like Joshua, he can't go back on his word. If he gave you the victory, you got the victory. If he says you're victorious, he's not going to change that. The only thing that can change that scenario is you. Because you don't cooperate with the process. Now, now the way Gibeon would have definitely lost the battle because he's already won. God said, I've given it to you. The, the way he would definitely have lost the battle is if he went out there and fought and did it in his own strength. And see, that becomes the problem is when we try to do stuff in our own strength and we don't do what God told us to do. That's the problem. Stop trying to fight battles that are not yours. The battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. And when you start saying, well, no, this is what we need to do, and I'm going to go do this, and God said, okay, that's on you. That's on you. But look at what Gibeon, he called for Joshua. And Joshua came, and he started to move towards him. Verse 8 says, and the Lord said unto Joshua, fear not, for I have delivered them into your hand. There shall not be a man of them that, I'm sorry, of, of them stand before thee. Verse 9 says, and Joshua therefore came unto the, came, I'm sorry, Joshua therefore came unto them, look at that, suddenly, and went up to Gilgal, I'm sorry, went up from Gilgal all night. Now, didn't I tell you there's three things that God likes to do? There's suddenly, immediately, and straightway. There's a whole lot of things that you're dealing with. If you give God his time, God's going to do it suddenly. He's going to do it immediately, and he's going to do it straight away. He's going to come rescue you, but you got to begin to trust God on another level. you got to see God for a supernatural blessing instead of trying to do it in your own strength. Because your own strength is limited. I said this on Sunday. Your bank account might be good, but it's not as good as God. Because God wants to suddenly pull the money from his account. He wants to immediately pull the money from his account. He wants to straightway pull the money from his account, not yours. He wants to put his hands on it quickly. But sometimes quickly to God is not your quickly. Suddenly, sometimes to God is like grandma said, wait a while, baby, because I'm coming. But it's all, it's, but guess what? Because how many of y'all know there's an appointed time for your blessing? There's an appointed time for you to get it. But you got to wait. You got to trust God. You got to seek him. You got to stop saying, well, well, you know, the deadline is tomorrow. God said, I'm already past tomorrow. I'm into, into the future. You worried about tomorrow. God said, I've been, I'm in eternity. He said, I, I've seen tomorrow and the days and the weeks and the years past. He said, I'm way past. All. He said, I know what's going to happen even before you even you can even try to put it together. And I just, you know, I just got a revelation of that. And that's, that's good. That, you know, that's good. God said, tomorrow, he said, he said, I've been through tomorrow eons ago. Your tomorrow, he's already lived. Mm, look, somebody grab a hold of that. God's already lived your tomorrow. Why are you worried about your tomorrow when God said, I've already lived, I've already worked way past tomorrow? Oh, that's good. Y'all, that is good preaching right there. That is, that, do, do you hear what I'm saying? God has already worked way past tomorrow. And I'm stuck in tomorrow, and God said, tomorrow's already been done. Somebody need to get that in the spirit because you're worried about your tomorrow situation. And God said, I've already worked tomorrow out. That's why the Bible tells us over in Matthew, he says, take no thought for tomorrow for the things of tomorrow. Tomorrow will take thought of themselves. It's sufficient unto the day of the evil thereof. God said, I've already got your tomorrow already worked out. Your tomorrow, he said, God said, why are you talking about tomorrow and I'm in infinity? Do you see how sometimes minuscule our thoughts can be? We stuck on tomorrow, and God said, I've already lived way past tomorrow. Way past tomorrow. Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to up in here. Somebody need to hear that. Way, and I got, I'm, he's telling me to park right here for a second. God has already lived way past your tomorrow, so stop worrying about tomorrow. It's already done. God said, I've already taken care of your tomorrow. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Let me, let me, let me get back. Let me, let me get back. Mm. Let's read 9 again. And Joshua therefore came unto them suddenly and went up from Gilgal all night. And the Lord discomfited them before Israel and slew them 
with a great slaughter at Gibeon and chased them along the way that goeth up to Bethron and smote them as Hezekiah and Machadah. Sound pretty good to me. And it came to pass that as they fled before Israel and were in the going down of Bethron, that the Lord, look at this, cast great stones from heaven upon them unto Ezekiah. And they did what? So wait a minute. God sent you some rocks from heaven to take out your enemies. Joshua chapter 10, verse 11. Joshua chapter 10, verse 11. He sent, look at this, stones from heaven upon all of them, and they died and they were more which died with hailstones than they of whom the children of Israel slew with the sword. God said, I took your enemy out with hailstones faster than you could with a sword. Do you understand that when the devil, that's why I sang that song earlier, no weapon formed to get you is going to prosper because when God said the enemy come at you, he said, I can take them out quicker than you can even imagine and more numerous than you can imagine. God said, I can get to them jokers even before, while you're trying to breathe and think. God said, I've already taken them out. Now, wait a minute. He took them out with hailstones. We've seen hail before. But I would guarantee you they're not them little teeny hailstones. I guarantee you. Have you ever seen the big ones? Oh, he probably was. He, okay, let me, let me go back. Can I go back real quick? How many of y'all ever been in a rock fight? Oh, some, I don't know nothing about that. Oh, the young kids, y'all don't know. See, y'all city people, y'all don't know nothing. You get out there, somebody, y'all get out there. I know Brother Ken, you done that. He done been, yeah, he from up the way, yeah. We, you get in a rock fight, them boys out there, they just slinging rocks. And you, ow, man, ow, getting popped up. But can you imagine stones coming at you? And God destroyed, because he told Joshua, I'm going to take your enemy out. Mm. Somebody need to get that in the spirit. God is saying he's going to take your enemy out if you'll trust him. If you keep believing him, he said, I got your enemy. You don't even have to put your hands on. And whoever I tell you to put your hands on, you'll take them. But God said, I got the rest of them all myself. He said he took out more of them than Israel did with the sword. God has got your enemy, and you don't have to fight them. Oh, there it is. I don't, I don't, I'm getting ready to say something prophetically. I just heard this. Whoever's attacking you on your job, stop trying to defeat them with your mouth. I don't know who I'm talking to. Stop trying to attack. Stop. You know what? Okay. You, don't, you, you want to come at me? Be my guest. When my daddy smack you, see, 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 that's the thing that people don't understand. See, we don't, we don't realize. See, and I've said this preaching up here before, you would rather that I hit you than God. Because when I hit you, you're going to get a bruise and it's going to go away. But when God hits you, it's going to be like an echo. Like, doo -doo 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 -doo. he going, he going, can, can, I, can I go back to the way? Excuse me. Sister Jennifer, pray for your back. You know, I get you, I say that all the time. God going to pimp slap you so hard. When he pimp slap you, I'm trying to tell you, you're going you gonna to wish I hit you upside the head. So don't try to fight your enemy because when God fights your battle, guess what? He going to take them out. He going he gonna to remove them from the situation. I remember years ago, I had somebody that tried to come against me on the job. I was a young IT guy. The guy the, the, he was the director of the facility. And I made a mistake. I made a rookie mistake. I did not mean to do it. And this man, he said all of this stuff to me. He said, I could cuss you out. I could do all of these things. And I said, sir, I, I, honestly, I am so sorry. I made a, a serious mistake. And, and, and back in the day, this, I don't think nobody in here Except for Jasper. Jasper might remember. How many of y'all remember DOS? I was a rookie IT guy. I'm going to give y'all a quick scenario. I got a whole lot. How many of y'all remember delete star dot star? Yes. And she was, the, he was, she was the boss's secretary. I wiped her hard drive clean. By accident, I was going fast because they, they had me under the gun. He said that I could, 
I, he, I could do all of this to you. I could, and I just went and I prayed. I went back in my office. I didn't cry. I just said, God, you know, you know my heart. I did not mean to do that. You know what? The company transitioned. He was one of the first people they let go. He ran the whole building and gone. God will deal with your enemies. God will take your enemies out. And I stayed there probably another 13 or 14 years way after he, he was gone. I stayed there. You see what I'm saying? God will fight your battles if you'll stop trying to fight them yourself. And, and let God be God in your life. So stop putting your mouth on people when they come at you. They might perceive you as being weak. I'm not weak. I'm just power restrained is all it is. I'm just power restrained because I don't, see, I could come at you, but guess what? You, if I come at you, you get me. But if I let God come at you, you get him. And trust me, he can handle you a whole lot better than I could. So let's, let's, let's keep going, y'all. I got, I got somewhere to go. So it says, and the Lord discomforted them. And, and you know what the word discomforted, I, I wrote that down somewhere. I can't think of what I, I put it, but, but discomforted means that he, 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 he took them out. And I, I, I can't think of the full definition. I had it this morning. I was thinking over it. But, but basically, God dealt with them. And God's trying to deal with your situation and your trouble if you'll let him do it. Oh, oh, I hear that. I hear that strong. Stop interfering in God's business. When God said he's going to fight your battle, let God be God. People, yo, we get in the, we get, we, you, we, God, I know what to do. God said, no, you don't. Sit down. You know, seriously, you, a lot of times we got God, but God, you know, they said this to me. God said, I know what they said and I know what they're thinking. Be quiet. I got this. I don't need your help. Because all you're going to do is mess it up. Ah, here we go. And a lot of times when we, re we don't realize, when we get in there in the flesh and mess it up, you're messing up your witness. I need to help God, and I need to say this. God said, no, you don't. If you do, you're going to mess me up. They're going to look at me differently because you open your mouth. Now, verse 12 says, Then Joshua spake unto the Lord in that day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel and said, In the sight of Israel, look at this, Son, stand still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajion. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their one, um, their enemies. Is not it written that the book of, in the, that in the book of Jasher? So that the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and has not gone, I'm sorry, go down the whole day. This is the one thing that I want you to understand. Now look at what, look at, look at this. See this scenario. This is what God was saying to me. Is, remember God said, I'm going to fight your battle. But now he sends Joshua and Joshua, you got to put, I'm, I'm going to save a few of them for you. Joshua had gotten so strong Till he spoke to God and he spoke to the sun and said, I need, Father, I need the sun and the moon to stop till we finish whipping them behind. Can you hear that? Sounds like he getting there, isn't it? Remember, he was saying, be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. Joshua done said, guess what? Oh, you know what? Oh, Holy Spirit just gave me a revelation. He said, the father stepped in and killed him with hailstone. Now I see I got some help. Daddy, hold up on the sun and the moon. Let me, let me do my part the way I need to do it. And God said, go ahead on, son. Go ahead. Oh, I, he, said, he said, now I see. Mm, guess what? I see you standing up on the inside. I see you becoming strong and of good courage. I see you getting the boldness to ask me to do some supernatural stuff to defeat your enemy. He said, oh, I see you rising up. So, yeah, guess what? Go ahead, sun, moon, stop. Guess what? Let that boy go ahead and shine and bring me glory. God wants us to rise up on the inside and be strong and of good courage instead of walking around saying, I don't know what I'm with God. Say, why don't you get strong? Why don't you act like the God that's on the inside of you? Why don't you be strong and of good courage? Why don't you decide you're going to represent God the way he represents you 
with strength and power. Did y'all see that? He told God, he said, God, hold back the sun and stop, stop. But look, let me, I'm, I'm going to show you better than I can tell you. Look at this. Go to verse 14. And it says, there was no day like that day before, before it or after it, that the Lord hearkened. Look, didn't I say he was talking to God? He hearkened. Where'd he go? He hearkened unto the Lord. I'm sorry, unto the voice of man. For the Lord fought for Israel. So he thought God hearkened unto the voice of Joshua to the point where the sun and the moon stopped and God said, go ahead. Go ahead. Do what you need to do because I'm standing right here with you. Go ahead and fight. Hmm. See, some of y'all not getting it. God is trying to hold back some stuff to give you the time and the light to do what you need to do, but you keep trying to do stuff in your own strength. Trying to do it your way. But no, I think we need to. God said, if you just let me be God in your life, I'll show you some stuff that you know not. But you got to jump over into the supernatural and stop being a natural person and decide that you are a spiritual being that over in the spirit. Get over in the spirit and let God show you how to fight your back. Get over in the spirit and let God speak to your heart and give you direction instead of you trying to do stuff that you know in your mind. Do you realize we all got a little pea brain when it compares to God? Oh, I said it that way on purpose. I want to see if somebody's going to get offended. Yeah, you got a pea brain. You could, you could have four PhDs and a 10 master. It don't mean to God you got a little pea brain. You don't know nothing. But God, because remember, like I said, he knows into eternity. He knows all of these things, but you got to decide. You're going to step over in the spirit and let God give you instructions to show you how to win. See, see, see how we see how church has conditioned us. When you say certain things, people, people get all puffed up. Oh, well, he called me a pea brain. I'm insulted. Let me, let me help you real quick. Somebody who was wise by the name of Job decided he wanted to ask God some questions about creation. And God asked him, he says, where were you when I put the stars up in the heaven? Where were you when I put the moon in place? Where were you when I did all of my creation? So how in the world are you going to have the audacity to think you know more than I do? All you got to do is get over in the spirit and the mind of Christ will become active to you. The mind of Christ will begin to be stirred up in you, and God will show you how to defeat your enemy because he's giving you victory to win. But we got to do it our way, just like Frank Sinatra. Hmm. And the Lord, I'm sorry, and there was no day that before it or after it that the Lord hearken unto the voice of a man for the Lord fought with Israel. And Joshua returned unto Israel with him and unto the camp of Gilgal. But these five fled, these five kings fled, hid themselves in the cave. And it was told Joshua saying, the five kings are found hid in the cave. And Joshua said, roll a great stone upon the mouth of the cave and set the men by it. Bless you and for it to keep, keep them. And stay you not, but pursue after their, their enemies and smite all the, the hindmost of them. Suffer them not to enter into the cities, for the Lord your God had delivered them into your hand. So basically the five kings went into the cave. He said, put a rock over the cave, but you go get the rest of them. Do you understand? See, but, but y'all, look at this. Look at, grab a hold of this. This is something that I want you to grab a hold of. God is giving them instructions the whole way. Listen to me. Hear me. Everybody look up here. He says, I am the Lord. I change it not. He giving you instructions, instructions the whole way too. But are you listening? Everything you're dealing with, if you be quiet long enough and stop talking long enough, God will tell you what to do. But you got to get over in the spirit. You got to get into a spiritual mode and start listening to God and stop doing what you think. Stop basing everything on your experience. Everything that you think that you've done before, how many of y'all know you still can't wear some old shoes that you had on, that you used to wear? They don't fit no more because you've outgrown them. 
So stop trying to put the same old shoes on in a new situation. God said, it ain't going to work. It's not going to work. He said, I got some new instructions. You're going to another place. I'm giving you fresh instructions. I'm speaking to you in a new way. Because where you're going next, you need some new information. You need some new experiences. So stop trying to do everything the same old way you've done it. Oh, I, I hear that. I'm going to say it, too. God says, as soon as y'all get in a situation, you got to run the credit card up. God said, I told you that I was going to meet your needs. So why you got to reach for your credit card? And the one thing that the Holy Spirit says, the problem is you need to become disciplined and learn how to wait anyway. I'm going to give you all some financial counseling one-on-one. -on -one. You know what the credit card is doing? You're robbing from your future when you're using that credit card. You're stealing from tomorrow, which is already taken care of. God says, stop borrowing from tomorrow. Oh, somebody don't want to hear that. Well, I got to have it, God said, but you got to have it later, not right now. Mm. Oh, that'll preach, that'll preach. I, see, when you, start, when you start meddling, people don't want to. Oh, no, no, no. No, Pastor, you don't know, you don't know. But I got to pay that bill. God said, well, let me provide it for you supernaturally. Didn't he tell Peter? Didn't Peter owe taxes? Then he said, go out there and fish. He said, the first one to come up. Look in his mouth, and what you need is going to be right there. Peter went fishing on his job. Peter went to his job. That, he was a fisherman, and he said, go out there and go fishing. And first one pop up, boom, that's, that's what he need to pay his tax. God know what you need, and he's always speaking. He's always giving you instructions, but are you listening? Well, let's go to verse 21. And all the people returned to the camp of Joshua and Micaiah in peace. None moved his tongue against any of the children of Israel. Then Joshua opened the mouth of the cave, bringing out those five kings unto them out in the cave. And he did so and brought forth those five kings unto him out of the cave. And the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jamath, the king of Lashash, and the rest of all five of those kings. Here we go. 24 says, And it came to pass, because I'm getting ready to close, when they brought those kings unto Joshua, that Joshua called for all the men of Israel and said unto the captains of, the, of war, which went with him, come near, put your foot upon the neck of these kings. I'm gonna stop right there, because I'm, I'm getting ready to go somewhere. I'm getting ready. God said, see, a lot of times, you think that the people who you work with or, or whatever your situation may be, whoever's coming against you has victory over you. But God said, guess what? I held them in a specific place. And I held them back for such a time as this. And God says, I'm going to give you the opportunity to put your foot on their neck. Because I'm going to give you victory in such a way that it's going to be an open sport. I'm going, the Bible said he spoiled principality, principalities openly. He made an open show of them. God said there's some people that's been coming after you. God said, I'm going to give you an opportunity to put your foot on their neck. And you're going to rise above them, and you're going to see my glory manifest and expose them. Yea, though I prepare the table before thee in the presence of thine enemies. God said, look, look, look at what he said. He said, look, he said, and it came to pass when they brought those kings out that Joshua called for the men of war. Verse 25 says, and Joshua said unto them, no, 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 let me go back. I went too far. Come near, put your foot upon their neck of all these kings. And they came near and their feet upon their necks, the necks of them. And Joshua said unto them, fear not, nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage. For thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom ye fight. 
God said, wait a minute. He said, put your foot on their neck. And what you're doing, I'm going to show you how much power I've given you to defeat everybody that comes after you. Even in the future, when they come, this same authority that I've, I'm giving you right now, I'm giving you the ability to put your foot on their neck and show the enemy and to show you more than the enemy how much power that I've given you. How strong you are and you don't even realize it. But Joshua, like everybody say, he got it. Oh, he got it because when he said what God said, he realized, wait a minute, now I'm strong and of good courage. Now I'm the man that he said, because I, I had to go through some battles and I had to let that thing build. But God is saying to you right there, you're stronger than you realize. God said he's giving you the strength and the courage to defeat your enemies and to put your foot on their neck to the point where your enemy looks at you and they say, no, I don't want none of that. I don't have nothing for that because God has given us victory. And God told Joshua, he said, I'm going to show you anybody to come after you. You're going to do them the same way. God said that that's the kind of power you have on the inside of you, that you have the strength to defeat your enemy and put your foot on their neck. So stop worrying about people when they come after you. Stop worrying about situations when they come after you because God says, I've given you victory to put the devil under your feet. The devil is under your feet. God has given you victory. The devil is under your feet. And you can put your foot on their neck. Because God says you're going to soar and rise above them. Uh -uh, uh, don't let, people, let them. Let them talk all the smack they want to talk. Uh -uh, uh. My God has given me the victory. God said, put your foot on their neck. So, you know, y'all stand up, stand up. Somebody need to do that in the spirit. Come on. Come on, y'all stand up. Do that in the spirit. You need to, you need to, you need to practice. You need to practice and get ready. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. God, take your right foot. Take your right foot and put it on the enemy's neck. Come on, put that. Come on, God said, put that thing on the enemy's neck. God said, put it on their neck and let them know that you've got victory over them because God has given you the victory over your enemies. Whatever your situation may be, God said, put your foot on it. Put your foot over there on their neck because God has given you victory. Stop whining. Stop being offended. Stop worrying. Just put your foot on the enemy's neck. Just put your foot. Come on, don't keep stomping. Keep stomping. Come on. Come on, get that thing in your spirit. Put your foot on the enemy's neck. Put your foot on the enemy's neck because God's giving you victory. God's giving you victory. God is giving you victory over the enemy. He's giving you victory over the enemy. Stop worrying about how things going to come out. Stop worrying about, just put your foot on the enemy's neck. Just put your foot, no, 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 you ain't going to win over me. Uh-uh, because God's giving me the victory. Put your foot on the enemy's neck. I don't care what the situation is. I don't care what it looks like. Put your foot on the neck of the enemy. Everybody say, he's got it. They say, I got it. I'm strong and of good courage. That's what Joshua developed in his process. Don't fight the process. Become strong and of good courage. Just let God take you through the process, and you'll get strong and of good courage. He won't, you won't have a problem putting your foot on the neck of the enemy. God showed him he was with him. God working with him. And God said, boy, guess what? You're stronger than you realize. You're stronger than you realize. You might not see it in the natural, but in the spirit, God said, you're stronger than you realize. Put your foot on the enemy's neck. Step on the devil's head and say, I've got victory over you in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against me is going to prosper. I've got victory. I promise you that. That's your promise. Put your foot on the enemy's neck. The neck of the enemy might be death. The neck of the enemy might be sickness and disease. The neck of the enemy might be a family member that don't want to act right. In the spirit, devil, take your hands off of my child. Take your hands off of my situation. Take your hands off of my finding. I put my foot over you in the name of Jesus. I got authority over the enemy. You don't have authority over me. I got authority over you. Get thee behind me, Satan. Back up off me in Jesus' name. Put your foot on the enemy's neck. Walk in the victory that God's given you. Now, you can't do this faking. You can't do this playing. You got to be serious about this. 
Because the devil going to test your resolve and see what you got. So if you're going to sit back and be a little wimpy and sheepish, God said, guess what? No, guess what? You ain't scaring nobody. You ain't even scaring yourself. But you got to put your foot on the enemy's neck. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this one more time. Do you see through this whole entire uh, uh, verse or this chapter that Joshua grew? He got stronger. And God is saying the things that I'm taking you through, I'm making you stronger. I'm training you. I'm developing you. I'm developing your spiritual muscles. You're getting stronger if you trust me, if you'll obey me. And I'm fighting your battles for you. I've given you victory. I've given you victory. Everybody say, he's got it. He's got it. And I got it. I got it. See, somebody, somebody ought to get excited about that. You got it. You got it. You got it. I got, I got the lesson, God. I got everything you promised me, God. I got, I got it. I got it. It took me a little bit. I had to go through some stress, some tests and trials and, and tribulation. But guess what? I got it. I, oh, I got it. Oh, I understand. You're going to give me victory over the enemy. I'm going to put my foot on his neck. Oh, I got, I got it. I got it. I got it. He got it. You got it. God just wants you to know you got it. He said, I've already given you the victory. That's why he told him, he said, I'm not going to fail you. I'm not going to let you down because I know you're a work in progress. I know I'm working. I'm working on you. I'm working. I'm working on you. I'm working on you. You just got to pay attention. I'm working. I'm, you're going to get better. Stay in there. Don't let the enemy tell you, no, quit, no, this ain't happening fast. No, no, just hang in there. Just, no, no, no. God said, I'm working on you. I'm developing you. You're going to get stronger each, every victory. You know, my mama used to sing that old song about Jacob's ladder. Every round goes higher and higher. God said, I'm going to take you a little bit higher. I'm going to take you a little bit higher. Just stay in there. You're going to get stronger. You're going to become more encouraged. You're going you're gonna to do more. Stay in the game. You might get some bumps. You might get some bruises. You might go through some stuff. But God said, stay in there. Because at the end, you're going to put your foot on the enemy's neck. God said, at the end of that thing, I promise you, you're going to put your foot on his neck. And the enemy's going to know your shoe size. Woo, somebody ought to get that. The enemy's going to know your shoe size because you've been there. And, fellas, you know what? The women got a little advantage over us because they can put that spike heel right in their little Adam's apple. Mm. Ah. Then women can put them spiked heels in the Adam's apple and stay there and, ah. But God's given you victory. God has promised you you're going to win. God has promised you that he's given you the victory. So I don't care what you're dealing with right now. Just give it to God and keep listening to whatever he tells you to do. Because at the end, he's going to give you the ability to put your foot on the enemy's neck. You're going to be able to look at Satan and laugh. Ah. Because God's not going to fail you. Oh, you're going to win every time. You're going to win. Just stay right. Just stay in there. I prom Just stay in there. Stay in there. Hang in there. Don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. Don't do your own thing. Don't go to your checkbook. Don't go to your bank account. Just keep doing what God tells you to do. Because he will supernaturally exceed your, and, and your desires and your expectation, I promise you. He's able to do exceeding and abundantly above whatever you could ask or think. Amen? Every head bow, every eye closed. Father, I thank you right now for your people. God, I thank you for this word. I believe, Father God, this word is going to be strength and encouragement to your people today, God. That, Father God, they'll begin to really walk with authority and understand that you're working out, Father God, everything that they need to have worked out so that they can put their foot on the enemy's neck and walk in victory, God. Bless your people today. Encourage their hearts, God. I pray when they go back and listen to this word, God, that they'll listen to it over and over again and get strength, God, and understand you're building their spiritual muscles so that they can walk in supernatural victory, supernatural power, God, over the enemy. We thank you, God. God, we thank you for giving us the victory. We thank you, God, that we're winners, that we're not going to lose God in any way, shape, or form. All we got to do is just stay in the process and trust the process and know that you're right here with us and you're not going to leave us, fail us, nor forsake us, God. So thank you right now. That's right. I hear God say, put your hands up and just begin to thank him.
just begin to thank God for what he's doing. Begin to thank God that he's given you the victory. He's given you the victory over your enemies. He's given you the victory over every... Oh, that's right, I heard that, God. The enemy, he said, your enemy's already defeated. He said, your enemy's already defeated. He said, I've given you victory over your enemies. Just begin to thank him because God says, you win. And you're going to put your foot over the enemy's neck. You're a winner. Just thank God. Just thank him in advance for what he's doing. Thank him in advance for what he's already done. Thank him for the process that he's taking you through because he's developing your spiritual muscles. He's making you stronger. He's making you wiser. He's making you better. You got the victory. You got the victory. You got the victory. Oh, no, no, I heard God say that. You are victory. You are victorious. That is who you are. God said, I made you great so that you can represent him. You've got the victory. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Put those hands together and begin to bless him.